Everyone, this is Joe DeVita from Loudwire, and joining me today is Will Ramos of Lorna Shore to talk about the song of the year, which is To the Hellfire. <laughs> With this symphonic element, there's a huge new wave of deathcore. Do you feel like deathcore is finally starting to shed that stigma that's always kind of surrounded it? Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like once upon a time, like people thought of deathcore as just like very chaotic, just like very like up in your face, like extreme like music. Whereas like now we're starting to like tame it, you know, a little bit, like almost give it like a better, like a, a more digestible identity, you know, give some structure behind everything and. Yeah, honestly, I think there's a fantastic direction for death tour, for deathcore to go in. It's funny you said you're taming it because it sounds completely unleashed and unchained and feral. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And uh, you know, you got new bands too, like Brand of Sacrifice, which uh, you just did a uh, guest vocal on uh, on the track Lifeblood. Uh, super cool. So Lorna Shore definitely leading the way uh, for this new era of deathcore that we're in, and it's great to see the evolution happening. No, we're trying, man. We're tr we're just trying to pump out music for people to fucking to jam, you know. So we're we're glad that it even got to be like top, like as big as it did it's to the Hellfire in the first place, dude. Yeah. When so. did you start catching on that this track was starting to go viral and gain a lot of buzz on the internet? Dude, it was almost like immediately we saw people posting it like everywhere, dude. There were articles left and right, and like everybody kind of wanted to know what was happening with Lorna Shore, like in the first place after like the whole whatever happened. So it's like. You know, as soon as we pumped out like uh, that song, it was almost like instantaneous. Yeah, it's a hell of, a, <laughs> of an introduction for you. And it's always interesting when a band gets new members, there's always this sort of kind of like statement to be made. Like I think of Judas Priest and Painkiller when Scott Travis came in on the drums and you open with Painkiller and that drum intro and it's like, OK, I can get behind this and it alleviates any doubt. And then, you know, of course, your vocal performance on this was ridiculous. Um, now I mentioned the, the Spotify viral 50, you actually hit number nine. Uh, when did you become aware, uh, that you had gone viral on the Spotify charts? Honestly, that was like a, a couple weeks later. It, it kind of like blew my mind. Cause you know, like you always, in, when you put out music and you've been working on it for so long, like you almost get like numb to, sure, you sure. know, what it actually is. You're like, Oh, you know, yeah, it's a great song, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then, like, you know, people kept still jamming it. And then, like, then we heard the news about that. We were like, dude, we, we made it. Kind of. You know, in my mind, I yeah. made it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're sitting at almost 10 million streams on Spotify right now. So I'd say you definitely That's made amazing. it. You, yeah, have, I mean, you have arrived. Good things are happening. Let's put it that way. Now, was there a consensus among the band that you really kind of had this, this gigantic track? I mean, obviously, the symphonic elements all those like neck wrecking breakdowns with the way that the snare hits, it's very violent and percussive. What was the consensus among the band when you were writing this, that you had these three songs to put out? Did you, did you realize that this was a total monster or is it just one of oh, those things knew. that everybody has to react? Oh dude, we knew it was like, when we, when we recorded it, we were like, we want the heaviest song to just drop first to just be like, to like punch people in the face. You know what I mean? And like, that was our heavy hitter, like punch you in the face song. And I mean, you can, everybody, you can tell when it gets to like that breakdown and everybody goes fucking wild about it, you know? So mm -hmm. as soon as we recorded it, we were like, dude, this is the one for sure. You know, <laughs> that's what we wanted to come out swinging with. Cause you always hear some bands that are like, yeah, we didn't know what, so, what was going to be a single. You never know. You can never predict a hit. Maybe if you're in the pop world a little bit more cause they're manufacturing them. Um, but yeah, that's, it's cool to hear that you guys knew immediately, like this is going to smash. Um, oh yeah dude we knew it we no, didn't know it was gonna smash as well as it smashed but we knew it was we were like if there's any song that's gonna smash on this thing it, this is the one right here so how long did it take you to construct that song start to finish how many different iterations did it go through or did it come together real quick uh well we were in the studio for like what like a week a week and a half for like these three songs so couple days definitely a couple days like I've been writing on my own time like everybody always has always been like writing you know when they have spare time and you know but when it all comes together in the studios where everything ends up changing you know so we 
I put together like my best reiteration and then we obviously ended up, you know, messing with it a little bit because once you start overthinking it, like everything you start like, oh my God, I got to put too much, too many vocals here. You know, maybe we should put more of this here. That's like every, everything came together with like this, this flow state where it was like, this is perfect. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I feel like you can tell when you listen to it. So. Now, were you keeping up with the reaction channels and seeing what they were? I was to a point, but my uh, my drummer was just going ham, dude. Like every, <laughs> he's seen every reaction video. It's the point where I would go to his house. And he was like, dude, have you seen this one? And I'd be like, no. Then we would have to watch it. It was like, I've seen Pastor Rob. That one was so good, dude. There's I haven't seen that one yet. My oh, fa- <laughs> dude. It was, I couldn't even watch it. It was so good. My favorite was uh, the charismatic voice. Uh, I love her channel. She sh- she's got so much passion. She even went to Bloodstock and was co- interviewing bands, uh, which was really cool. Uh, so she's gone really headfirst into this, but she's usually critiquing, you know, singers um, instead of yeah, pigs being slaughtered. Um, so it was really funny to get her reaction because she would kind of like recoil and shudder whenever like the snare hits came in and you could really sense just how violent it was and then I, she had so many things to say about you i don't know if you're familiar with all these vocal techniques one that she used was supraglottal um was one of the terms did you know you're utilizing any of these techniques or are you just like i'm just fucking going for it dude i'm just going for it man i'm not <laughs> gonna lie like i did an interview with her recently and she was like like we we're just talking about such so very nice lady like super super cool but it's clear, like when I was talking to her, that she knows things that I have no idea what is going on. Like she started, she was like, oh, do you know when you use this? And and I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, I sure, do. I do that. I think, so. I think I do that. That's <laughs> That makes sense, you know. But she's so smart. She's like, I think opera singers, the best singers, period. So it, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't surprise me that she knows as much as she does. Did this get you interested in learning about any of these techniques that you are using, even though you didn't know it? Honestly, I figured out the techniques first. So, you know, I, I still think it, it's safe. You know, she, she, after talking to her, she definitely opened my eyes to doing like other things with like mouth placement and all that. She's a genius, honestly. I'm convinced, you know. Oh, she's so, amazing. She's got so much yeah, passion. I love good. watching all of her videos. Um, now, how many takes, uh, vocal takes, did you do for this in the studio? For To the Hellfire? Yeah. Well, we did it like, you know, like some, we, sometimes you go in, you nail out an entire line, you get it perfectly. Sometimes you get an entire section. So honestly, I couldn't even remember. It was, it was such a long time ago at this point. And and because we're in the studio now, everything just blends into like one long studio session. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? So So what I couldn't tell you, but yeah. What about that one breakdown at the end with the, with the animal noises? Was that one take or did you do a few of those? Keep the best one? It was like a one take thing. Like the way when I first did it, I just did one and you know, and, and, and the dudes were like, dude, that was cool. But just do that. Continue. Keep doing that, you know, throughout mm-hmm. this spot. And I was like, all right, so let's do it. And then we did it. And I was going to be, I was going to be like, I can redo it, you know, and I could do it a little better. And then Josh, uh, Josh was just like, nah, dude, just leave it. You did it. It's fine. It's great. Just leave it the way it is. I was like, okay. Honestly, I found out like the more that I kept trying to do it anyway, the less good it was becoming. It's one of those things where you were overthinking it again, like how we were talking about before. And it's just like, you know what? Just keep the first take. First take's the best. Let's do it. Yeah. So how has it been trying to replicate that? Because it seems like one of those moments, like I think back to Iron Maiden and the scream and number of the beast, where it's just that magical moment where it happens and you could do it once and you spend your entire life just trying to chase that one take over and over and over again. So how has that been for you live? Honestly, not a, it's not too bad. We always open up with that song. So I'm, I always start out like fresh. I, I feel like my voice is ready to go. I'm like, let's go, you know, before I go mm-hmm. through a, a roller coaster of, of vocals that I end up going through for like 45 minutes. But because I always start out fresh, I'm like, dude, it comes Got out it. fine. I'm like, I haven't heard any complaints yet. So I think we're in a good place. <laughs> you know? it's, it's so wet and disgusting. Like one vocalist that comes to mind for me is Mortuous from Marduk. And it's just got that really gravelly, throaty, it almost sounds like he's puking. Uh, What do you do to sort of maintain that slobber tone, (laughs) I guess we'll call it? I drink a lot of tea sometimes, mostly coffee, you know. Mm. I don't even know how to describe where the the sound comes from, but, you know, uh, tea helps for sure. Let's Mm. put it that way. (laughs) Are you mixing in inhales with exhales? Oh, no. 
I, I, all my vocals are exhales, except for like the snorts. I think the snorts, you got to do a little, there's no way to do it without inhaling. But like, for the most part, everything else that I do is all exhale. Mm -hmm. So I, what I love about your voice too, is that you don't just do all the, the low gutturals again. I'm just going to return to this pigs being slaughtered, dude. Um, but you do a lot of those high shrieks and it sounds a lot like uh, Travis Ryan from Cattle Decapitation. How big of an influence has he been on you? Honestly, I haven't listened to a lot of cattle, but I've heard that from like all the time. Everyone's always like, dude, Travis Ryan, Travis Ryan. <laughs> After listening to cattle decap later, I was like, wow, like it's, it's very clear that like we both came up learning the same, you know, what techniques, you know, but I'm not going to lie. Like figuring out how to do my highs was all listening to all shall perish, dude. Eddie Hermida, just because yep. he has those, he has those highs that are just like, and I was like, how the hell do you figure out how to do that? And, you know, yeah, all shall perish. So maybe it kind of morphed into some cattle decap thing. But like <laughs> Eddie was the guy for me, especially growing up in high school. Yeah, those highs are punishing because if you hold them out too long and then you release it, all of a sudden it feels like somebody's just like squeezing your head with a vice. Uh, do you get that sensation sometimes? Uh, I mean, that's more like for me, I get that if I was not, if I was pushing from the wrong place, but at the end of the day, like when you do vocals, you want it to feel like very comfortable and very relaxed. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If you're feeling like pain in your head, it might be because you're squeezing your entire body to produce this one note. So, you know, it can happen, but it's usually like, if I'm just not paying attention to my technique. Now, other than uh, some metal vocalists, are there any animals you look up to vocally? Oh, dude. I mean, you, we got to say, man, it's the pig, man. You know, I'm Puerto Rican out here. We have pig every freaking holiday. So, you know, I mean, it really resonates with me, you know, on a spiritual level. Um, so let's talk about uh, the overall EP in general. I think the EP is such an underutilized format for metal bands right now. Honestly, we were trying to just put out something that showcased like what I could do and what the band now is with given like everything that happened. Like now we got a new vocalist, like do I even fit the image? We were like, how, rather than starting out really big, like, like start with that, with, like a nice small EP, like again, to hit like the heavy hitters and then like the less heavy hitter songs, which like, and I returned to nothingness, which isn't really any breakdowns or anything like that. So, you know, uh, when it all came together, it, it, it came out perfectly, honestly. As someone from New Jersey, I got to ask you, Taylor ham or pork roll? Pork roll. Pork roll. I said so, it. I said it. I so, think my friends will fight me to the death, but I'll, it's pork roll. So for, for everybody who's going to be watching this, who is not from New Jersey or the Northeast, you want to give them a rundown on the difference on the Taylor ham pork roll debate? It's just like pretty much half of the state. North, we got the North and we got South Jersey. And it is a constant debate over what is it called Taylor ham or pork roll? Because I'm pretty sure Taylor ham is the brand and pork yep. roll is the actual the meat food itself, substance. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it, you know? And so like, it's, if you live in Jersey, it is a, a feud. Like if you call it the wrong thing, someone will definitely correct you, especially the, I mean, obviously depending on where you are, but it's, it is like never ending. I don't, it's like how people use Q-tips and cotton swabs and they're like, what do we call it? And it's like, I, I don't know. It's I don't know, <laughs> dude. I don't know. It's pork roll. It's pork a, roll. the one thing in this world worth being divided over. Exactly. I'll take it. <laughs> Well, Will, thank you so much for your time. Again, Lorna Shore, To the Hellfire, the song of 2021. If you haven't heard it yet, I don't know what you've been doing for the last year. It's easy for the year to fly by. There's a lot of music coming out, but nothing got better than this song right here this year. Will, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, man.